on here. Let's write our first open SCAN programs using the primitive solids and talk a little bit about commenting. When writing code, you always want to put little notes in there. Remind yourself what various parts of your program do because <laughs> time will pass and you will eventually forget. Uh, some things are kind of subtle and you want to remember, why did I do that? So how do you put little notes to yourself in your code? This is a comment. We call this a line comment. If you put a double slash anywhere in an OpenSCAD program, that means that tell OpenSCAD to ignore everything until it gets to the end of the line. So that'll ignore the rest of line number one. You can do a multi-line comment by using these guys. Multi-line comment is ignored by OpenSCAD. Okay? And there you have it. Sometimes you want to tab these in more readable, whatever you want to put in there, it, the OpenSCAD itself will ignore when it goes on to read the rest of the file to create shapes and things on your commands. Let's talk about the cube. How do you create a cu cube? Let's say a 50 and a half unit measure preview. View all, get it all on the screen. There you have a cube whose di <laughs> dimensions are 50 and a half by 50 and a half by 50 and a half. If we zoom in really close on this mark on the markers, here's a 60, there's your 50 right there. Let's not do it at 50 and a half. Let's do it at 48 and a half. It'll be easier to read the, the little marker. So there's 50, there's 49, there's 48, and clearly that's 48 and a half on a side. You can also probably zoom around a little bit and do the same thing on Z. Obviously, it's at 48 and a half. Same is true in Y. So there's you have it. There's your basic cube. You have other options with cubes. Let's make a 20 here. Well, it's easy to see how these measure on the uh, course level markers. You can also say center equals true. By default, center is assumed to mean false, which means put the vertex of this lower left corner of your cube at the origin in the three-dimensional coordinate system. If you say center equals true, it puts the center of the volume of the cube at the origin of the three-dimensional space. It's sometimes easier to design a, a composite object that's made up of multiple cubes if you know where the center of the volume is rather than where one of the vertexes are, vertices are. The default is, of course, false, and it's up to you to decide how you want to specify in your design. So there's explicitly defining it as false, which is, of course, the same as just using the default of false. All right. Now there's another way to make a cube or a cuboid, technically speaking. Let's specify all the parts. Let's make this false, but you can put these square brackets and give it what is called a vector of sizes. For different dimensions on the x, the y, and the z axes, hit preview. Now I have a 20 by 400 by 40 cuboid shape here, all right? So you don't have to, in other words, stack a bunch of cubes together to make this giant rectangular prism. You can just simply say, hey, look, I want to use these three uh, side dimensions instead of the uh, harder way of stacking up cubes. And, of course, you can also center this volumetrically on the all three axes on its center. And there you have it. There's your cube. How do you make a sphere? Again, this can be an integer or a floating point value. Spheres are always centered volumetrically at the origin of the coordinate space. If I put a 50 in there, that means I want a sphere whose radius is 50. There's your 100, there's your 50. Done. I can explicitly say r equals 50, so I know it's a radius. I don't have to remember that's the default. And I can also say d equals 50 and design using dimension uh, uh, diameters as dimensions rather than a radius. So obviously a, dimen a, a dimension of 50 in the diameter means I want a 25 radius, right? So there's 50, uh, 90, 80, 70, 60, 50, 40, 30. So that must be 25. If we zoom way in, it adds extra uh, resolution to these axes. So 30, 
9876.25 right there. And there you have your sphere. The other primitive cylinder. Here's a cylinder whose diameter is 50 and whose height is 100. Preview. Oops. I hit the mouse funky. That's okay. You just hit view all and it puts it back on the screen so you can see it. You'll notice that the, when you design a cylinder, the circular base is centered on X and Y, but the base of the cylinder as a whole is placed at the zero of the Z axis. All right, so there's your hundred and so on. Like the cube, it assumed you wanted centering equal false, but you can override it and say center equals true. Now it centers X, Y, and Z, so the center of the volume of the sphere is at the origin of the coordinate system. Again, depending on how you want to work with them, it might be more convenient sometimes to use one no no notion over the other. False, of course, is the default. I can explicitly say false as well. Okay, like the sphere, I can also design using radii instead of diameters. Radius of 50, done. Okay. I can also say radius 1 and radius 2 like this. Now radius 1 refers to the radius of the base of the cylinder and radius 2 uh, refers to the radius of the top of the cylinder. And those two of course can also be dealt with in diameters, not just radii. There you have it. Again, diameter 50 is really radius of 25 and so on 90. Half a 90 would be what 45. So there you have it. You don't have to make the top bigger than the bottom either. This could be a 20 down here if you want. Now you got that. In fact, it could even be zero. Now I have a perfect cone. Comes to a point. All right. And of course, you can center cones just like you do cylinders. So there you have it. Those are the three primitive shapes uh, and their options and how you can center them. You can combine these in various ways to create any type of volume you need.